All right, so we have this thing in iOS called Liquid Glass now. You probably know about it. Uh, you're probably wondering, how do I get this working in my Flutter apps? Well, there is a way. Um, it's kind of a controversial way, and it's a very interesting thing, and, and I think it's worth putting a little video together uh, to explain um, how it can be done. And uh, it'll be a nice debate to see, should it be done this way? Um, so, um, Liquid Glass, for those that don't know, is just in iOS 26. I know we jumped from like 18 to 26, but it's because now iOS is going to be, and, and Mac OS and, and whatever, is going to be following like um, how cars are, are named, right? They're named after the upcoming year. So in September of 2025, we got iOS 26 released. And uh, Liquid Glass is kind of like this effect. Um, I have this little video here uh, where the UI just kind of has this cool, <laughs> cool thing to it. Um, a lot of work went into this, I'm sure, by the uh, Mac OS and iOS developer uh, people at Apple, um, and it's cool. Now, I know there has already been some work done um, just by some independent projects to try and emulate this using shaders and that kind of stuff, uh, but it is pretty heavy, and you know, I don't think we're all there yet unless I've missed something. Uh, but what I've come across uh, is really interesting, and it's actually made by, um, it was an experiment done by Victor from ServerPod. Uh, if you don't know about ServerPod, check it out. It's a cool full stack Dart Flutter um, platform for, for building full stack apps. Uh, I have a lot of content on my channel about it if you want to check it out there. Uh, but this was part of their sort of open source initiative. This is not a ServerPod related thing, although you could, of course, make a Flutter app that works in ServerPod and use this, uh, no problem. But um, it's kind of cool how it works. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of show you a demo over here on the little uh, screen. And keep in mind, this is this is a simulator, so it's already going to be a little bit slower and laggier than if I was running this on a real device, which is a little bit harder to show you. Uh, however, uh, I don't think there's a need to because it's actually very performant. Um, so we'll just look at a few random things here. Like we have like these sliders with these cool goopy effects. Look at that. That's so cool. Um, we have, you know, switches or whatever. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Uh, and then probably the most impressive is the tab bar, right? So you get this uh, cool, um, you know, blurring effect under it. And when it changes from dark to light, it kind of has this nice pop. Uh, there's a search. Uh, okay, cool. And we can, of course, in this demo, you know, change different colors of things, go to dark mode and, you know, see how all this stuff really, you know, works. Um, so how are we doing this in Flutter? Uh, of course, there's nothing stopping someone from writing, you know, the custom shaders and stuff uh, to make this work across the board in Flutter. But um, this was done in a unique, <laughs> a unique way. And uh, if you read through the README here and everything, you'll say that it is kind of just an experiment of how you could do stuff uh, differently. Um, and uh, it is kind of a Frankenstein of a project right now, uh, according to Victor himself quoting, uh, you know, it's definitely, um, you know, needs some more work if this ever sort of Want to use. Although what they've built right now is completely ready, like it will work. Now, what are they doing here? What are they doing here? Let's look at some code. Um, so I just have this example, the same example app over open here, and let's uh, yeah, let's go to the slider page. So there should be just something called like slider. Um, actually, let's go within example lib. So different demos here. We'll go to the slider, and. Um, what we can see here is just standard Flutter code, you know, nothing different here. And then there's this thing called CN slider. Okay, so that's the Cupertino native slider. Um, that's this package, by the way, if I didn't mention, is called Cupertino native. Um, Cupertino being, you know, Apple's design um, language, library, uh, whatever you want to call it. And uh, it's named after their, you know, where they are located in Cupertino, California. So, uh, okay, let's look at CN slider. So we'll command click through here. Again, this is still just dark code. Um, and, you know, you have all the kind of stuff you'd expect, like thumb color, track color, you know, steps, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, it's just Flutter code, except if you scroll up, you actually see these things um, for channel.invoke method. Okay, what's that for? Invoke method. I don't know. I don't know. Um, so I'll, I'll try and make this really simple. What is happening here is when you create one of these components, uh, like a CN slider or CN button or all those kinds of things, it's essentially in Flutter creating like this little frame, <laughs> this little rectangle that's like, hey, something's going to go here. And what goes there is actually the native um, Mac OS or iOS version of that component. And it's using method channels and all these kinds of things to communicate with it. So you can kind of think of these as like almost like little iframe embeds if you're like a bit of a web developer. And it's actually embedding um, what is happening, what, what 
Mac OS and iOS uh, would be doing natively. So we're getting full native performance here within these little places. Uh, we're getting all of the effects. Um, if you know the new version of iOS, let's say iOS 27 comes out and they kind of change how Liquid Glass looks or feels, in theory, this will just continue to follow that because we're relying on that. Um, okay, so that's kind of cool. There's some pros here, like, you know, we're getting that performance, we're getting those effects for, for very little work. Um, there's some cons too, you know, in, in Flutter, I'm always thinking like, okay, I'm building an app. It's going to go on iOS and Android. It's going to go on maybe desktop and web. And in this package's case, um, the only thing you would be getting is this stuff for Mac and um, and iOS. And there's no way without you know re-replicating it in Dart to get this same effect on Android. Because again, we're pulling right from uh, these kinds of things. Uh, so that's kind of a con, although, you know, maybe that's fine. Maybe what you do is you actually build your app to, to have like kind of adaptive design where it uses the CN sliders for, um, for you know, Mac OS, uh, but it uses the, uh, you know, the material one and, and an actual just a Flutter one uh, for Android. So it's definitely, you know, it's definitely something worth, you know, thinking about if you're one of those people that are trying to make an iOS app that is as native feeling as possible. Now, is that, should that be your goal? In some cases, maybe, um, you know, if you're building an app that your audience, a big part of your audience is on iOS, like they might like to have those things. They might want it to feel that way, but I'll be real. Like, I really think that <clears throat> this whole having, you know, this perfect, like exactly looking like an, an iOS app thing is, I think it's a lot, it, it, it's kind of like become like, um, turned a molehill into a mountain. Is that the term? Is that the turn of phrase? Um, because I don't think most users care about that, you know, frankly, like they just want an app that works, that does their thing that looks good. Right. I also think that a lot of really good apps these days aren't even using Cupertino or material, even if they're building it in like native Swift or Kotlin, um, they have their own design and they want it to look really nice to their brand, not to the device it's running on. So just some things to think about, like you shouldn't always be, you know, oh, it has to be exactly like this. Now, if you were just building an iOS app and you didn't know Swift, um, but you wanted to have that sort of fidelity, this is kind of a cool approach. Uh, so let me just walk you through a little bit more how it works. Um, so I have this, the packet. Uh, so inside here is the example app. This is the, the, the whole thing I have checked out here is actually the open source package that uh, the server pod team, mostly Victor, I believe, has, uh, has created. And what we kind of see in here is if we go into... Um, you know, our library here, this is where we get the different components. So we have, for instance, the slider component, which we have open right now um, because I click through to it. So that's the Dart one. However, if we go into iOS um, right here, we will see in classes, I think, I think it was in classes, factories, yeah. Uh, so we can find the slider factory. Um, so this is actually now Swift code, <clears throat> not, not, um, not Dart that sort of like does the stuff for the initialization. Uh, and then you'll see views for each of these ones too. So for instance, the slider platform view, this is Swift code that is essentially creating the slider. Uh, I'm not, you know, an expert in Swift. Like I probably spend a bit of time being like, this does this and this does that, but like you can go, <laughs> you can just, you know, figure that out on your own. Cause this is a flutter. This is a flutter video guys. This is not a Swift video. Um, although we're obviously touching on some Swift stuff. So, um, <clears throat> Yeah, that's uh, that's basically um, the package, and it just does this stuff, and it's <laughs> it's freaking cool. Um, again, like I'm not saying that this is like what you should be doing. Um, it really, I think, was just a an experiment for um, the team of how it could be done. But it's an interesting approach. Um, what do you think? You know, is this is this like something you could see yourself using if you want to get that liquid glass? Uh, do you think this is you know an overkill way of doing it? Uh, definitely let me know in the comments what you think. Um, this is you know <laughs> to me it definitely like sparked my interest. And I'm usually you know I think the guys at ServerPod like uh, the, the the folks at ServerPod are you know doing some really cool stuff over there. Obviously on their own product, um, but the fact that they're you know stepping out and and doing these sorts of initiatives I think is cool. They're very smart very smart people. And, um, this, you know, I, I, I'm on the fence. I'm like, do, would I use this? Um, maybe <laughs> it is kind of cool, but, um, I'm not, I'm not sure yet. And, and, you know, I think if we get some little discussion going in the comments, or if you can join my, uh, my membership and get on my discord, I'd love to talk more about it with you there. So yeah, thanks for watching this one is a quick one. And, uh, I hope to see you in the next one.